Before you say anything, I actually really enjoyed it for what it is. There are a lot of positive things for me to say, so let me start by giving a bit of context for the title. Par is a golf term that describes the maximum amount of hits to enter the hole on a course before it ends up being a bogey. A bogey is when you go above the margin of good or acceptable hits on a golf course. So if the par is a 5, that is the max amount of hits to get the golf ball in a hole. Everything else above that is subpar performance, aka a performance that doesn't meet the standard. This is still a really awkward explanation of the term par, but it's the best I can really do offhand. What I mean by doesn't meet the par, I mean in context of its legacy as a franchise to begin with. Or at least the canon quadrology in the OG Hyperdimension Neptunia, Mark II, Victory, and Victory 2. No, I am not going to say the Rebirth Trilogy is the canon trilogy, because that makes zero sense categorically. How does Victory 2 follow from Rebirth 3? If Victory 2 is a sequel to Rebirth 3, where's Victory 1? That's what I thought. Anyways, its canonical legacy is what establishes the par, and therein the standard of comparison. Don't get me wrong, I don't actually care too much about whether Game Maker is canon or not, notably because it isn't and brain dead individuals heavy on copium after compile heart already said on press that there's a new numbered title when every possible group of logical people consider svs and game maker to be a spin-off but enough said about that topic i personally do not consider a game being canon to be automatically good nor a non-canon game to be automatically bad sure it can be exhausting and tiring to feel like there's no progress, but that sort of thing is easily solved by making it a sub-canon storyline, aka a storyline canon within a separate or even the same company, but to make it a spin-off in its own miniseries. Think of Devil May Cry within the context of how it used to be a test build for Resident Evil. No, the problem has nothing to do with its canonical state, but rather whether said game is good on their own. The issue I have with Sisters vs. Sisters is wholly unrelated with its status and everything to do with the fact that it sets a low bar as a mechanical standard for game making. It has been lauded by many, including myself, as a tech demo that just so happens to have a complete story to it. You know, I'd honestly be impressed with Sisters vs. Sisters if it came out around the same time as Mark II. I know some are not going to like this take, but I mean no ill whatsoever. I love Mark II, but imagine if you followed a game like the OG, and instead of it being Mark II, it were to be followed by Sisters vs. Sisters instead. Its work and standards would have been impressive if it were at the start of Neptunia's journey in gaming. It has been 15 years now, a little bit less for Sisters vs. Sisters, but still roughly a decade or so for that. There is no excuse at this point. Endless reinventing of the wheel is pointless if you don't know what wagon to hitch it to. A step in the right direction doesn't mean anything when we've gone an entire mile in the wrong direction. Thankfully, Game Maker, took all the foundations Sisters vs. Sisters established and built off them to be more cohesive. I am also of the opinion that either the developers slash publishers watched my video on Sisters vs. Sisters or someone passed the skinny to the developers because a lot of my complaints about SVS got fixed or tightened. A little too coincidental. Namely the space between levels. My biggest complaint with Sisters vs. Sisters is that too much empty space for you to travel in. In my opinion, they overcorrected this by overpopulating certain areas, but in my opinion, it's still more engaging than staring into meaningless space. Another example is the life 2D rigging for their sprites. Many of Sister vs. Sister's unnatural, jerkier movements have been largely tightened and improved. It feels like they move more along the lines as a person move. Keep in mind that there are still that feel unnatural, but it's mostly more organic to human movement. As for why this is important, it allows us to suspend our disbelief that these characters are in fact not people. 
it shows and gives the illusion that in fact these characters are still people. There are plenty of additional expressions as well that make the cast of this game more enjoyable to appreciate and love as well. They truly nailed the kinetic energy of the new cast. It feels so much more alive than it did with Sisters vs. Sisters. Not to mention that older Nep is everything regular Nep was in the older days. I wish they kept that fact true. A shame really. Seems like Neptunia V2 gets zero love from the developers. Maybe it's because they despise the ludicrously high standards it set for both mechanical depth in gameplay, soundtrack, and story. Which this leads to one complaint so far. Its soundtrack is still woefully underperforming to me. The main notable songs for me are the ending credits and the spoiler final boss's theme. Anyway, to the next part of my feeling. The mechanics are a double-edged sword. I live as a contradiction. I normally despise ARPGs, but my biggest complaint with SVS was its heavily limited functionality. It was like consuming expired half and half with how half-hearted its tribute to Mark II was. And despite my hatred for ARPGs, this game showed me that my problem with ARPGs often are in conjunction with my disdain for Sisters vs. Sisters mechanics. Poorly thought out, superficial design. It is in making Game Maker an actual true ARPG that somehow gives Game Maker such life and vitality. It took removing the superficial BS to Mark II to give their intended vision some life to it. Game Maker has an actual pulse to it. Some electricity running through the veins, which works perfectly with Older Nap as a character. Older Nap, both the character and the legacy version of regular Nap, as life and vitality defines their character. With older Nep, both the voiceovers and the writers got to work with now that the superficial trappings of the contrivances of modern Neptune are entirely removed from the equation. It shows to me, in other words, that what Compiler Heart is doing to regular Nep is malicious in its intent to change and retcon what the OG Neptune was with pure sleight of hand. They chose to rip Neptune's soul out of her, superimpose it to older Neptune, and pretend this new farce of smaller Neptune has somehow always been this way. Neptunia Victory slash Reaper 3 continues to irreparably damage this series with a slow, lethal dose of poison, especially with Neptune Noir and Vert, as it feels like that despite new versions of each of these characters, they're still enjoyable now that the main four are side characters. Now that they're not crowding people with their new BS, they feel more tolerable to enjoy and it relaxes their characters. For example, I never thought I'd want a pairing between regular and app invert, but that CG man it just felt so damn right. It made me think that, huh, yeah, you know what? This pair is perfect for each other. They're both superficial, they're nerdy gamers, and that they're both notorious slackers. They also bounce off of each other well. Something you may not be able to pick up on when the main four are the main character. As often, even in V2 to smaller extents, certain characters and their actions would make me mentally check out until the main plot happened. V2 managed to find ways around this by moving certain characters to different arcs, but I'm getting off track. Point being is, I enjoyed these four as a dynamic more, when they're not the main protags. Just like regular Neptune and her behavior, I enjoy the main four more the less I see them. It allows me to see more of their good side. It's okay to have a mentality of less is more, as it is better to love people while they're away than to hate them when it's shoved down your throat. Distance often makes the heart grow fonder. And Older Nep is everything I ever loved about OG Neptune and cranked to an intense 11. She's proof that the say you didn't need to make her voice higher pitched for her bass form or lower pitched for her HDD form. Ri Takahashi's standard voice is an alluring charm that is just better au natural. Yeah, I really shouldn't have fucking put French in this. 
It also enables the character to react to situations more organically, and I think organic slash organically is the word to describe what I love in the series overall. Authenticity. What makes Modern Nep so unsalvageable and fucked is when main Nep is the lead protagonist, or deuteragonist these days, is its inauthentic nature. Constantly interrupts people for no coherent reason, which is fucking annoying, and you know it's fucking annoying or constantly demonstrating a writer's lack of confidence in Neptune's status by having her constantly remind people she's the main protagonist. Even when it makes zero fucking sense, she hasn't been the main protagonist for two whole fucking games. I don't want to hear her say that stupid shit anymore. Cut it out. Give me V2's version of regular Nep. Yes, yes I do want regular Nep and older Nep to act the same as Nep and V2 because they're the same goddamn character. Neptune's interruptions, when she used to interrupt, happened because the events that were happening were demoralizing her ally. She used to be thoughtful, caring, selfless, and ultimately enough, mature. You know it, I know it, and especially Compile Heart and, the, and its writers know it, because Compile Heart has been trying to superimpose all of that onto older Neptune alone so they can make Neptune a discount Deadpool SB. Is it any wonder then why so many people love and prefer older Nep? Why people want more games with older Nep and less games with regular Nep? It's because older Nep is natural and also herself. No pitched up or pitched down voice performance. No disgusting artificial BS that current regular Nep has. Nothing that derails the plot. Just older Nep being the Nep we've always known overall. And she bounces off the new cast well. Small spoiler alert. I actually felt actual emotions when having to see older Neptune leaving the new characters by the end of the game. I wanted older Nep to stay, settle down with her new friends, and become a family man to Neptune's wife, Radio, their daughter Pipkin Pippa, uh, and older sister Jagger. Spoiler over. Okay, you know what? That joke sounded funnier in my head than how it turned out. Boo! You suck! Moving onward, I seriously just love the dynamic of friends who have closeness akin to family that they had. I enjoyed how the gold third were made out to be important. I enjoyed the mechanics because alongside my previous praises, made it feel energetic, though a slight problem does arise. It still heavily relies on character switching. Out of context, this is a good thing. It is always a great thing for mechanical depth to get people to try new playstyles and new characters. In the context of both this game and the last, however, it heavily disincentivizes transforming and EXE gauges, and generally in most battles, becomes a character switching fest. It is super easy to just play the main four of the game, spam square thrice or four times, switch out when the little little note of shows up, repeat the process, do the same combo again, switch all while the damage multiplier increases. It's another good thing out of context, because it generally creates a frenetic pace and heavily encourages switching switching for damage output. In context, however, the switching mechanic is often more damaging than the EXE drive to the point where the EXE drive is used more for killing mobs and knocking down enemies than being an actual finishing blow. Oh, and using TP attacks is still an option. So if you feel like you cannot finish the square combo, you can interject these moves to continue the combo and often it is used in anticipation of when you think you're going to get hit by an enemy. The thing is, it gets worse with certain boss fights. Because I forgot to mention something. Only 25.8% of you watching right now are subscribed to the channel. Just kidding, of course. But uh, please do subscribe and like the vid, please. The actual thing I forgot to mention is that going into your superpowered form, be it Awakening for Older Nep, Goddess Forum for the rest, gives you infinite TP. And this infinite TP feature is what puts a death knell in any form of mechanical depth or danger. I think the only two battles I needed to do any form of grinding for was that one gold third battle. Seriously, fuck that battle. And the final boss. Love that battle. Speaking of which, the boss battle and its theme were fantastic. Also of note, you can actually get the final boss in at least three different levels for the battle. For record, mine was level 76. 
Ultimately, were it not for the goddess forms slash awakening form, this form isn't even the weirdest reference in tribute to Neptunia victory. Having infinite TP, which governs both item healing and TP attacks, this would be a radically different game. I should not be able to beat a boss with somewhere between 2-10 to 10 minutes with a spam of switch attacks. That being said, my solution can be any number of things. No damage output multiplier increase. Reintroduce the AP system, but instead of just being a reference and capping it at 25 no matter what, make the AP cap a non-linear increase the closer you get to max cap level of level 99. Heavily increase the base damage output of the EXE drive so that people are more likely to use it as a finisher and not as likely to be used as a knockdown combo extender transition. Get rid of the infinite TP when transformed feature. Any of these are acceptable, and if you want to tighten it even further, you can use multiple of these suggestions. Whatever you do, do not repeat the mistakes of this game or that of Sisters vs. Sisters. In the end, it is unfair to compare this game to the legacy of a series that used to define the hidden gravitas behind this series. But goddamn does it try its best. It doesn't meet the par that previous games established. It's a single bogey game, aka a plus one, which again, when you understand golf, you understand that's not a good thing. Recap notes time. Fun mechanics to learn, but replay value is lowered when you master the game mechanics to the point where you just span the same combo structure over and over. Unbalanced gameplay ranging from too easy to too hard at the drop of a hat. It rips off too many ideas from Yakuza Like a Dragon, including but not limited to multiple versions of the same boss rush concept. The final boss levels not being consistent, which I consider to be a flaw of the programming, but feel free to correct me on that. Choices you can decide on in-game that don't really manifest into much, except maybe in the final boss's level, but I cannot be confirming this with how poorly communicated it is. Introduces F-Shop. New characters are cute and endearing, lessens the toxic impact of the OG4. Dismally generic and unimpressive OST, excluding the final boss OST and ending credits thing. Fantastic CG design and new character dynamics. A story that makes me want more of the new main character, which is always a good thing. Ultimately, on its own, it's a fun, energetic game with enjoyable mechanics, but ultimately its level is surface at best. The time for yet again reinventing the wheel is done, dead and buried, and please keep this mechanic set to non-canon games. Let canon games, like the current quadrology, still be defined by turn-based mechanic, please. This game had a lot to live up to. As a singular game, it did fantastic. As a sequel to Sisters vs. Sisters, it shatters and goes beyond all expectation. As a game related to the legacy of the series, it's abysmal in surface level. Overall, because of this, I'd have to say this game is an 8.25 or an 8.5 out of 10 if I'm being generous. Fun, energetic, electrifying as you play and finish. After that though, it's entirely un- memorable which is saying something because each canon game and even some non-canon games are all memorable for their own reasons be they by virtues or vices just remember that my will is absolute Let me